some explosive reports, the FEC chairman, Trump campaign bringing legitimate accusations of election fraud to the court. The Trump campaign is bringing legitimate accusations to court through affidavits of credible witnesses and other evidence used in its challenges to electoral outcomes in various states. Federal Election Commission Chairman Trey Trainer has said. There are several different stages involved here. Trainer said his review of evidence, including numerous affidavits of voter fraud, sworn statements by a prominent mathematician flagging up to 100,000 Pennsylvania ballots, at the first level of legal scrutiny under what's known as a motion to dismiss, which would remove less credible claims, noting the subsequent threshold beyond a motion to dismiss his summary judgment phrase, said under this phase, the credibility of witnesses is presumed to be accurate, especially given the caliber of testimony trainer has observed to date. A judge this must review all the evidence accurate. in light most favorable to the movement's opponent, explained Cornell University Law School's legal information website. What I would be concerned with if I were on the other side is that if you look at the level of evidence provided by these affidavits, hundreds of affidavits that corroborate events that have happened on the ground in a summary judgment. You have to take the evidence of the plaintiff as being true, trainer told a news. Meanwhile, Sidney Powell has appeared with Lou Dobbs explaining what's going on. The court has to take evidence plaintiff being true and see whether or not the other side can make a case against it. So the massive amount of affidavit we see shows it was in fact fraud taking place. While the Trump uh, campaign's lawsuits in targeted states is in various stages, at the end, Trainer said, what I say is these are legitimate accusations that are going to be tried in court, and we need to let the legal process play out. Meanwhile, nearly a third of Democrats believe the election was stolen for Trump. Indeed, they made themselves have actually voted for him. According to a Rasmussen poll conducted November 17 to 18, nearly half of likely voters, 47 percent, believe the election was stolen for Trump. Joe Biden's problems aren't simply that many Republicans believe the election was stolen. The poll showed significant partisan divide on this issue. 75 percent of Republicans believe it very likely or somewhat likely, 61 and 14 percent respectively. But while 69% of Democrats say it's not likely, 61% are not very. Eight, 30% of Democrats believe it was very likely, 20% or 10% that it was somewhat likely. Let me repeat, nearly a third of Democrats believe it's likely the election was stolen from President Trump. That's a remarkable number, huge in fact. Meanwhile, the Trump legal team has released a statement on Sidney Powell breaking down that she's not technically a part of the president's legal team, but of course she's appeared with Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, Joe DeGeneva, and others. I believe this is a technical clarification of her status that's necessary for various formal reasons, which have yet to be explained. Let me invite your comments. Scorpio, your thoughts. Well, uh, there's some interesting points you're bringing up with the legal maneuvers going on, but uh, the problem I'm having is it appears to me that the entire political and uh, legal apparatus has aligned themselves against this effort, and I believe that the corruption is so great at the top that they're going to do all they can to stop this. Uh, the other thing that concerns me is Dershowitz and um, you know uh, Giuliani are a little suspect in my book. But of course, you know, Dershowitz kept his underwear on at Pedo Island. He didn't do anything. Uh, I don't know. I, you, when you, it, it seems there's a pattern of people pretending to be Trump's allies who are not his allies and then later turn around and stab him in the back. And I think the other uh, um, strategy here is simply to keep the 
public's mind focused on fear of COVID. That seems to be what they're doing, but I hope this goes somewhere. Chris, your thoughts? Well, I'm just trying not to really picture uh, Dershowitz's uh, junior prom night down in, <laughs> <laughs> down in Epstein Island. Man, that's just a, a disturbing just uh, visual imagination in itself. But uh, thanks, Scorpio, for that. Uh, yeah, I think that there is like a Shakespearean drama that's being led up and ramped up. There's a lot of potential energy that is being uh, mobilized in one direction, seemingly. Uh, I mean, I don't see anybody really falling in line with what the New World Order wants to bring, but I, I wonder if, how dedicated they are to holding the line in terms of uh, demanding integrity, democracy, uh, just the right thing, you, you know, in the face of, of this great corruption, as David pointed out. So uh, back to you. Well, all the forces are unquestionably aligned against Trump, but that does not mean they are going to prevail. Here is a Dr. Eowyn report from the Trump legal team. He won in a landslide so massive, vote counting was halted to adjust the rigged Dominion software. An excellent article talking about the press conferences where representing Trump's legal team were Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, and Jenna Ellis, who turned out to be a superstar. I was very impressed by Jenna Ellis. I knew how good Sydney was. Rudy is a bit of a mixed bag, but these seem to be his best moments historically. Citing sworn affidavits and allegations of election fraud, including Pennsylvania, Giuliani uh, said the team had enough to overturn any election. If you count the lawful votes, Trump won Wisconsin, for example, and that around 100,000 absentee ballots in Wisconsin were tallied that ought not to have been. The legal team said the uh, irregularities across the country were centralized, a centralized conspiracy helmed by George Soros, the Clinton Foundation, Joe Biden, and the deceased Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez. Uh, uh, Sydney also observed there's evidence of a massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China to interfere. They leveled their most inflammatory charges at Dominion voting systems which was used by actually, they say some states, 30 states, including all of the swing states to count votes. Powell said, the Dominion voting system, Smartmatic technology were created in Venezuela by Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election. We have a very strong witness who explained how it all worked. His affidavit is attached to the pleadings of Lynn Wood in the lawsuit he filed in Georgia. As soon as he saw multiple shades shut down the voting the night of the election, he knew the same thing was happening here that had happened in Venezuela. Uh, Powell observed Trump won by a landslide. We're going to prove it, and we're going to reclaim the United States of America for the people who vote for freedom. Then Wood filed an affidavit from a former Republican congressional candidate that showed more votes were cast in at least 19 precincts in Michigan than there were available voters. Look at the percentage, 350, 144, 138, 136, 104, 103, 102, 101. Preposterous. You could hardly have more conclusive proof than a mathematically impossible percentage of votes. Meanwhile, Lynn Wood has observed, this country is going to be shocked when they find the truth about who's been occupying the Oval Office for some period of years. Yesterday, he discussed his 17-year-old client's release, Kyle Rittenhouse, voter fraud, and much more. Uh, Wood explained how he's hopeful that after John Durham's report comes out, many are going to be going to jail. He dropped a few bombshells along the way. So the Supreme Court is being aligned. The Department of Defense was recently realigned by the president. Take a look how he put in place a cyber terrorism and terrorism expert. As I said, look what he did in 2018 with the executive order to deal with foreign interference in our nation's elections. Look, I'd like to see in a perfect world John Durham's report come out and people go to jail. I'd like to see Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell and a lot of people go to jail. I'd like to see what's on Hunter Biden's laptop. I'd like to see those people go to jail. I'd like to see what's on Anthony Weiner's laptop. I'd like to see a lot of people go to jail. And when we get to the final phase of election fraud, I'd like to see people go to jail. One thing I'll say is 
there will be an intermingling. There will be people going to jail, I believe, who are involved in all of those or some of those same investigations. The truth has to come out. I believe it will. I do not think that you can hide the truth. I do say it, and I believe that every lie will be revealed. This country is going to be shocked when they find out the truth about who's been occupying the Oval Office for some period of years. They're going to be shocked at the level of pedophilia. They're going to be shocked at what I believe is going to be a revelation in terms of people who are engaged in satanic worship. Any guess who Lynn Wood's referring to? There you see Barack Obama, Michelle, Bill Clinton, and Hillary. I have no doubt about it. Scorpio, your thoughts? Well, uh, Jim, I think we're in an all or nothing game here with this. Uh, we're playing for all the marbles here. And, uh, you know, I think the strategy moving forward is, is simply to keep people terrified of COVID and sweep everything else under the rug. I hope they don't succeed. And, you know, um, it's, there, I don't think there's much doubt that Trump won in some kind of a landslide, given uh, the complete lack of understanding of the American people by the Biden campaign. They, they didn't offer anything of any use to the average American whatsoever. Uh, just more restrictions, more government uh, control of our lives. That's about it. And, you know, what's disturbing is that when that judge in Pennsylvania threw out the uh, court case, he described it as a Frankenstein legal document, a bunch of, you know, questionable legal strategies stitched together. Uh, I, I'd like to know what the background of this judge is and uh, who appointed him and things like that, because uh, you're seeing pretty severe bias going on in the courts right now. Oh, yeah, there's massive corruption at low levels in the judicial system across the United States, no doubt about it. Chris, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, I'll go off for a minute on this. Uh, I've had experiences with the corruption of the Democratic Party here in Michigan. Uh, I've had my vote flipped in the DNC primary from Bernie Sanders to no vote rendered. Uh, and really what happened was it was an interesting situation. I presented this to the Secretary of State. And really what they did was erase my voting record. They didn't, uh, you know, they didn't rectify the fact that I was disenfranchised or whatever. And, and it seems to me like the voting machine, it, it took my vote. I took a picture of the ballot. I took, a, I mean, I was that suspicious of the process here that I actually felt the measures to do this and even presented this to them. And in the face of that, they just erased my voting record. So that was something was, I'll say there. Uh, also, I want to point out that these voting machines, I think are UN instruments, not necessarily developed by Hugo Chavez per se, or maybe they were used for him. But I think that this has gone on since like Gladio B and the establishment of the national security uh, apparatus and the acts that we've had from there. Uh, there's historic records of Diebold and RSS machines going bad. Uh, HB Gary force multiplication software or consensus management software for social media. Well, there's Palantir, where in 2016, they turned the Bernie or Bust folk into Russian bots and truly uh, leaned on them to force them into compliance to voting for Hillary in the national. And I don't think that any of them really voted for them. I think they voted for Trump. And that's why they couldn't really, in 2016, uh, account for that big of a rig. And uh, I'll say also in this digital holocaust of fangs that's going on with censorship and whatnot and erasing people from, from the Internet and, and from the ranks of, of community outreach, uh, that is alarming. The smith Mund Act, I think that being repealed by the Obama uh, uh, NDAA renewal, that's that's alarming. I think that needs to be dealt with. I like your point about the 2018 Act. That's great. Uh, hopefully Trump's got this figured out. Wayne County has been traditionally underserving the black community and, and weaponizing and pandering to them and mobilizing civil rights for well, as long as I can remember, historically speaking. And you're right, time will tell. And I think COVID is a cover fire for like Zika, uh, you know, things like they've done other coups in, in places like Argentina or Brazil in 2016, or, you know, other things in Southeast Asia or, or in Africa with Ebola or other places like that. Uh, you know, you haven't seen this kind of like bio warfare weaponry or this type of, of hubris uh, uh, between science and, and ethics since like the days of Atlantis or pre-Diluvian tales. So uh, back to you guys and some of this stuff. Well, those are wonderful points. And I do believe rather than a UN operation, it's a CIA operation and that it wasn't Hugo Chavez who was using the machines uh, to succeed, it was the CIA using the machines to defeat Hugo Chavez because. Uh, hey, hey, Fed, can I can I ask you a question about? Uh, I have a theory. It's a UN colonization model that I think the United States is being used, very similar to how the Spanish Empire had been used 300 years before, and we're seeing like the Spanish succession going on now 300 years later. Does that make sense to you? Well, it's pretty fascinating. Uh, Scorpio, would you like to pick up on that? 
Well, uh, you know, I, I think the lines got blurred between the United Nations and the CIA. I think the CIA essentially acts as a uh, enforcement arm and a dirty tricks yeah. arm to make sure that the agenda moves forward within the United Nations. I, I think it's all one web of, of corruption and one web of control all emanating back to central bankers, essentially. Good well, man. there's no doubt that it's a, a globalist attack on the United States. Without Meanwhile, that. looking forward, Republicans and states hold overwhelming control in post-2020 congressional redistricting. Republicans are set to control the redistricting of 43% of the U.S. House. Democrats will control the redistricting of at most 73 seats or 17%. This is absolutely fascinating. Republicans won almost every election where redistricting was at stake. They're set to control the redistricting of 188 congressional seats, or 43%. Democrats at most 73 or 17%. The numbers are quite different than those predicted by 538 on October 27th. Our analysis found that 117 congressional districts, 27% of the entire House, are likely to be drawn Republicans, while 47 or 11% are likely to be drawn by Democrats. In fact, the outcome was almost exactly the opposite. All kinds of issues took place for down ballot. The Republicans were prevailing again and again and again. In Missouri, Governor Mike Parson was elected to a second term, keeping redistricting in Republican hands. In an upset, Republicans kept the majority in Minnesota State Senate, ensuring Democrats don't have unfettered ability to draw the state's projected seven congressional votes. The GOP kept control of the state house in Iowa. Republicans maintained their supermajorities in Kansas. Republicans surprisingly put both the state Senate and state house in New Hampshire. Much, much here to report. They may have won the presidency, but they failed to fulfill one of their biggest hopes in the election cycle taking control of state legislatures and the power to draw electoral victories. If President Trump is unsuccessful in demonstrating his victory in this year's presidential election, it will be interesting to watch how the GOP responds to this absolute garbage from Democrats who are actively engaged in cancel culture and the suppression of conservative ideas and speech and in the general shut up or even their social media comrades and boy, when it comes to anyone who disagrees with their increasingly radical worldview and agenda, absolutely laughable. Scorpio, your thoughts? Oh, this is outrageous. Uh, well, you know, as Stalin said, it doesn't matter who votes. What matters is who counts the votes. I think that's the, uh, the situation we're rapidly moving into. And I also think we're reaching a point where these uh, conspirators, they're so confident with their agenda now, they don't care who knows uh, about the voter fraud. Um, they're just going to use the mainstream media to cover it up. And um, it's up to us to try to get the word out to people with shows like yours and what we're doing now. And uh, the, the problem is, is th that these people are planning on re-engineering our entire society, the economy, and the way, the very way that human beings um, uh, interact with one another, and I think I think what we're seeing with this uh, cancel culture and th this complete lack of tolerance towards free speech is they're trying to unveil a one-party system, uh, much like China's. Oh, I think you're spot on, Scorpio. And the public was so enthusiastic about the Democrats' agenda that Joe Biden couldn't draw ten people to a rally. When he came to Kenosha, Trump had preceded him, and there was a string of citizens five blocks long waiting to greet the president. When Biden showed up, one person, one misguided school teacher came out to greet him, and that was replicated all over the country. The idea could hide in the basement and win this massive electoral victory only uh, originated because they knew the fix was in where Nancy Pelosi's chief of staff just happens to be the chief executive officer of Dominion. It's that blatant. It's that bad. Chris. Yeah, uh, just let me add one thing, Jim. And you're sure. absolutely right what you're saying. And they mm -hmm. never could have pulled this off without the cover of COVID. Yeah, I think you're completely right. Chris, your thoughts? 
Yeah, good point. Yeah, that's what I was saying about like some of the other things they've used, whether it's like the Olympic Games or the COVID or Zika thing. And, and like I say, Brazil and Argentina 2016, uh, six months apart, you know, and never even recognized by the international media as well. Uh, I, I think it's arguable that, that they're trying to put people that I wouldn't even deem qualified to, to be like dog catcher as president of the United States the last few times from the DNC. And, and I don't think that's an accident. I think that they're trying to trigger the other side of the base and, and, and even mobilize their own base, like mobilizing the Karens. And I think really when they figure out the ham-handed scale til tilting that's going on here, I, I think that the mama bears are going to start waking out of hibernation and really going to be visibly upset. And I think that there's a, a, a an effort to uh, – monopolize and, and to control the confusion levels and the information levels of these people. And I, I think there is a 50 state solution as well to try to commandeer this election process or the selection process in the manner that you're seeing. I saw a similar thing like in the Nevada caucus in the, the 2016 DNC primary where, where Harris and Boxer come over from out of state even to interfere with some of these things and to literally you know flip off uh, caucus members that were trying to uphold principle uh, against nominating Hillary Clinton, of course. And, and you know, like we talked before about Rhodes Scholars potentially being loyal to the Crown of London and certainly not to the United States. It's not the first time that the, the political two-party process has been infiltrated by foreign influences that are certainly not Russia. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's going on here. And, of course, these guys have to double down on their deceptions because they're waist deep in blood. And, and like it's, it's a confidence trick, like most Ponzi schemes or even like the backflip. You know, it's it's 90 percent confidence. So. I think you're going to see this technocratic shove get get hit into a brick wall and, and and rushed over by the orange crush. I think that's coming. Nice, very nice points, Chris. Like it. Meanwhile, Team Trump evidence shows more than double the vote margin in swing states is from illegal ballots. Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, Janet Ellis gave a blockbuster press conference. In the states we've indicated in red Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, we more than doubled the number of votes needed to overturn the election in terms of provable illegal ballots. This is where I hold Alan Dershowitz in contempt because he's come on again and again to say he doesn't see that they have sufficient evidence to overturn the outcome when even Rudy is announcing they have more than double what they need for that. Let me be very clear, our objective is to make sure to preserve and protect election integrity. President Trump has been saying from day one, this is about maintaining free and fair elections in this country. It's not about overturning an outcome, Ellis argued, where in my opinion, she was absolutely blistering, completely brilliant during the interview, where they appear to have multiple pathways. Giuliani read from uh, an affidavit by uh, Jesse Jaffin from Detroit, Chris. She was assigned to voting duties in September. She was trained by the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan. She was trained to cheat. She said, I was instructed by my supervisor to adjust the mailing date of these absentee ballot packages to be dated earlier than when they were actually sent in. She made the announcement for all, all workers to engage in that fraudulent practice. That's not me saying that. That's this American citizen saying that under oath. Then she was instructed by my supervisor not to ask for a driver's license or any photo ID when a person was trying to vote. Don't ask for identification. Why would you not ask for identification? Because you knew that a lot of people who are not entitled to vote were coming in to vote and vote early. She also said, I observed a large number who came to the satellite location to vote in person, but they'd already applied for and submitted an absentee ballot. So she observed a lot of people voting twice. Again, this is Jesse Jacob, not me. I was instructed not to invalidate any ballots, not to look for any deficiencies in the ballot. Why would you do that? Because you're cheating on purpose, cheating, intentionally cheating. Don't look for any deficiencies in the ballot. If she was instructed not to look for any of the signatures on the absentee ballot, why do you sign it in the first place? In order to identify it, but she was instructed not to do it because many of the absentee ballots were fraudulent. They knew it and they didn't want to have an account. I've never met her, never coached her, Giuliani said, and I'd like you to notice it's signed under penalty of perjury. We have a hundred more of these. I can't show them to you because they don't want to be harassed. They don't want to have their lives thrown apart by the goons on the other side. I want to say again that, in my opinion, Rudy Giuliani is showing himself 
in the best possible light in this period now compared with, for example, 9-11, where I have no doubt he was complicit. The allegations Giuliani presents are serious and deserve careful examination. While I, meaning the author, may be skeptical of the campaign's grandiose claims, it's important for the campaign to have its day in court. I have no doubt that is going to happen. Scorpio, your thoughts? Well, that's very interesting. Um, one thing I think that's going to play out here is the law of unintended consequences with this massive voter fraud. We're going to see 73 million voters being red pilled because of this fraud. Uh, and um, so that's going to have huge reverberations no matter what happens with, with the uh, election. Many, many people are being red pilled more than ever. And so that's part of the rush to get this agenda moving quicker and quicker because it's pretty patently obvious to probably about half or more than half of the country that something is seriously wrong with these phony elections. And I'll say, if this is not uncovered, if this is not exposed, we will never have another legitimate election again in this country. Scorpio, I think you're 100% right in the fact that so many people have been awakened to a conspiracy of here to for unimaginable proportions <laughs> is going to have a tremendous positive effect in opening their minds to what's been going on in this country for decade after decade after decade. Chris, your thoughts? Well, as they say in hockey, you don't celebrate in front of your opponent until the game is over. Uh, I will <laughs> say that, that we have maybe had some awakenings. That's great. But I, I would have to say that maybe we're not out of the woods yet. There's a lot of possibilities that have concerned me as well about, uh, you know, I think this whole thing could be a theatric to maybe distract us or to divert us away from the possibility that they're talking about delivering a vaccine within a 24 hour period to the American people by the military. Uh, that's very right. alarming to me. I think that also there's a possibility, like uh, Dave was saying, that uh, 73 million voters in the Trump base that have been disenfranchised and disaffected, in addition to those in the Democratic base that might be uh, impacted by their own personal integrity and ethics, in addition to the other 150 million voters that didn't even vote because they've been frustrated systematically by the systems of justice or the democratic process or, or just didn't have time or, or whatever, whatever the reason might be, eventually this is going to draw people into one side or another on this. So I, I, that's kind of maybe empowering and, and, and good, but maybe can be alarming too, to, depending on how the media is able to, to steer the people into perception management. So yeah, there's a lot of questions and concerns I have. Uh, I, I really don't see 68 million people ever voting for Joe Biden. Like you say, I, I think only his chauffeur was there to greet him at his rallies, you know, and I, I couldn't see that, uh, you know, people would really be, be, this would be a thing. But man, given his track record, given his S-306 Senate bill, the omnibus bill against the citizens as, as terrorists, uh, his Patriot Act before the uh, before 9-11, it was, I think, after Oak City, he had a Patriot Act uh, rough draft ready. He sponsored Tough on Crime Acts. He's been invested in for-profit prisons, uh, operations to, to really foist the stereotypes and to mobilize and pander to these demographics. Uh, you know, so I hope this stuff will get brought to light like time usually does. And I hope that, that it's done in a timely manner so that the people can have the facts and really make a sound decision for themselves and i appreciate what rudy uh, giuliani is doing right now and hopefully uh his efforts can try to redeem himself in the eyes of, of the people for things like tower seven and, and things like that so yeah ex 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 excellent comments yeah, great Chris. points we'll be right back meanwhile get this a national democratic party official has suggested re-education camps for trump supporters how do you deprogram 75 million people it may all play out quite differently, however, get this, a report on events that are not yet widely known. It's just, uh, yeah. All right, it's a shopping list. So you got to pay close attention. And if you need something redone, just say stop, and I'll do it over. So Loretta Lynch indicted three counts, conspiracy to overthrow the government. Two counts of obstruction of justice, three counts of lying to Congress. Sally Yates, three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government, three counts of obstruction of justice. John Brennan, three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government, three counts of lying to Congress. Two counts of lying to investigators, one count of conspiracy to commit treason, three counts of obstruction of justice. Pause there. Who was that? 
John Brennan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure everybody got that big name there where you heard conspiracy to commit treason. That's that's this stuff is jumping up the chain very quickly. Go ahead, Mike. James Clapper, three counts conspiracy to overthrow the government, two counts of lying to Congress. CIA operatives indicted, no charge, four CIA operatives indicted, no charges listed, which means that I wasn't given those and I don't have their names. Uh, James Comey, three counts conspiracy to overthrow the government, six counts of perjury, four counts of obstruction of justice, four counts of falsifying government documents. Andrew McCabe, three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government, two counts of perjury, three counts of lying to Congress, one count of falsifying documents. Bruce Orr, three counts of conspiracy, actual, what the conspiracy is unknown, but it's three counts of some kind of conspiracy. I don't have the actual charge. One count of falsifying documents. Baker, indictment charges unknown. Struck. Three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government, four counts of perjury, three counts of falsifying documents. Four hey. counts of falsifying documents on Strzok? Three, uh, Strzok, four counts of perjury, three counts of falsifying documents. But he's still subject to a different, he's still subject to another grand jury. I know, so I know, I know. Over a lot of these guys, yeah. I'm trying to do the math on... Uh, it's not because the counts matter to me. What I'm trying to figure out is, okay, so if he's got those three counts uh, falsifying documents, which three documents would Strzok have been in a position to falsify? That, that's where my brain's going. Yeah. So I'm trying to right. put the pieces together. Go ahead. Well, it could be anything. It could be a 302. Yeah, so. exactly. So it could be anything. So, yeah. All right, Page, three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government, three counts of perjury, one count of obstruction of justice. Rod Rosenstein, five various charges, exact unknown at this time. Susan Rice, illegal use of government systems, three counts of perjury, one count of obstruction. They got her. They got, got, got her on the fucking 702s. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Looks like it. Yes. But. She's she's also subject of, a, of another grand jury as well. So let me just say that it appears as though indictments have been released, but it may be forever before the mainstream would ever report them. So look for indications, further substantiation from the alternative media. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has unveiled its new circuit assignments for the justices. Here is the breakdown. For the District of Columbia, Roberts, First Circuit, Breyer, Second Circuit, Sotomayor, Third Circuit, Elioto, Fourth Circuit, Roberts, Fifth Circuit, Elioto, Sixth Circuit, Kavanaugh, Seventh Circuit, Barrett, Eighth Circuit, Kavanaugh, Ninth Circuit, Kagan, Tenth Circuit, Gorsuch, Eleventh Circuit, Thomas, for the Federal Circuit, Roberts, Chief Justice, there's been the observation made that Conservative jurists are responsible for the districts in which the various contested swing states appear. It's pretty significant. The federal court system is made up of district courts, appellate courts, and the Supreme Court. After a case has made its way through one of the nation's 94 trial courts, a party may appeal to the circuit court in their jurisdiction. Here we get an outline of how it is done. The Supreme Court helpfully explains why the justices' circuit assignments matter. Partitioners can submit emergency application to an individual justice. A recent example, Pennsylvania Republicans in the Third Circuit submitted an emergency application to Justice Alito asking for an injunction in an election-related case where he responded by granting the request himself to the rest of the court. Fascinating stuff. Scorpio, your thoughts. Well, uh, as far as these indictments go, I, I'm sorry, I'm just very dubious of all this. And I, my question would be, who is going to execute these indictments? I honestly believe that this system we have now is so corrupt that there is no functioning arm of it left to execute these indictments. And again, I sincerely hope I'm wrong. 
I'd love to come on the show and say, well, I was completely wrong and this is a good thing for the country. And I couldn't help but notice that guy's vaping on the video. I mean, what, what's this guy smoking? I got to wonder. I don't know. <laughs> Very interesting <laughs> observations. Chris, your thoughts? Well, I agree with Dave that the, uh, the agencies by which these type of regulations or lawsuits or whatever uh, prosecutions could be enforced have been vaguely and vastly compromised in, in ways that we probably still can't imagine despite all these revelations. So I'd have to say that at some point in time, something has to be done in terms of Lex Talionis and justice uh, on behalf of the citizens against this, this tyranny. Uh, and I just don't see it coming from the institution itself. I don't see the deep state regulating itself like it, it's tried to do all along every time it gets in trouble for these overreaches. So I, I think that really you're going to see them maybe try to walk this back down and, you know, maybe uh, try to avoid a civil war. Or maybe they're trying to start one all together from this because I, I can't see any other uh, advantage to this this process other than maybe the truth fighting against deception or inversion. And uh you know, hopefully the people see what's going on because I, I don't see that really visibly happening from the people as well. Everybody's running around like a bunch of lemmings in a Skinner box wearing masks and, you know, mm -hmm. dehumanizing each other by any pretense as possible. So uh, I think the humanity is going to have to come together and, and if not form like some sort of grand jury trial uh, of our own uh, outside of the process, possibly if the process continues to, to fail us and to betray us. As Lynn Wood has observed, be patient. My I'm opinion trying, is this is all going to play out in the right way. And it, but an anonymous group of CEOs said they'd hold off acting against Trump until after the Georgia recount when it's now done. The Georgia recount confirmed Biden's win over Trump. The CEOs said they might make public statements or put pressure on Republican legislators to distance themselves from Trump. An anonymous group waiting for the results of the recount uh, uh, two dozen CEOs of major U.S. companies met on November 6th. What to do if Trump refused to leave office? Most have remained anonymous. The Yale professor who convened the meeting, Yale, which is uh, the George H.W. Bush institution, and in my opinion is as closely tied to the CIA as MIT, the home of Noam Chomsky, who convened the meeting, it's intended include the heads of Disney, Blackstone, Johnson & Johnson, other unnamed Fortune 500 companies who no doubt are going to have their business ventures succeed wildly under Biden in a way they would not under Trump. The CEOs decided, as though this were their right, that Trump should be able to pursue his legal challenges. Oh, how generous of them but said they would act if Trump tried to unlawfully stay as president or interfere with the transition of power to president-elect Joe Biden, who, of course, isn't even a president-elect because the General Service Administration has not declared that the election has been decided. Meanwhile, unsurprising, a Liverpool professor was explaining the hazards of wearing masks and the fraud of the COVID was actually cut off by the BBC. She had barely warmed up. I'd say she was about a third into the way of explaining what she had to say when they cut her off. So we can count on the deep state, whether it's in the U.S., the U.K., Australia, New Zealand, Canada, to continue to work their will or do their best to achieve that goal by censorship and other modes of abuse of their position. Scorpio, your thoughts? Well, this is very disturbing, this article on several levels, because what, what we're really seeing here is we're seeing that the CEOs are now weighing in on the political fate of our nation. This is profoundly disturbing. And this is the technocracy being unveiled where an army of technocrats, doctors, scientists, and corporate elite will be the illuminated rulers of the country. This is what they're trying to create. I hope people see this. And this notion of testing children in school without their parents' uh, consent, this is extremely dangerous as well. And this could be used as a loyalty test. Uh, anyone that's not loyal to the regime suddenly has COVID. Yeah, nice points, nice points. Chris, your thoughts? Well, Dave really got my mind stirring on that again about the COVID thing and even like the bio warfare and antidote concept where money fails to reach the mercenaries. Maybe these would be mobilizing uh, forces as well. 
Uh, so I, I really think that's something. Uh, I, I like your point about Yale, too. I'd like to point out that Elihu Yale was, I think, one of the first governors of the East India Company from the British Empire, and, and he was a loyalist to Britain, obviously. And mm -hmm. most of the Ivy League schools that were established under these networks are, are really uh, secret society havens in a lot of cases, and, and a lot of them hold secret loyalties to this UN or UK agenda that we talked about, even Rhodes Scholars as well, like Rachel Maddow and, and others like that. So I'm a little concerned about that. I also want to point out that Harvard and, and, uh, and Mather and, and the, the witch trials that were involved with, with some of these things in Salem back in the 1600s, uh, in the periphery around that, are also the, these bloodlines are infiltrated into the deep state and into things like JPL and, and uh, other companies like this, you know, big names. So uh, this mass hysteria, this PCR witch hunt, I, I see a lot of parallels, historically speaking, and how they use fear. And, and even like in some of the Diocletian, Decian purges in Rome, very similar type things. The people given exemption from laws and from, from retribution are the same people, and, and the same people are, are being purged and, and, you know, persecuted. Wonderful points, and I love the historical allusions. I think you 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 got uh, spot on. Meanwhile, points, Chris. Trump, Trump's brilliant pre-election executive order that trapped the Democrats. What I have to share today is a nuclear bomb, if true. All indications are that it is. It begins with something President Trump did on 12 September 2018 before the midterm elections. On that day, he issued an executive order entitled Executive Order on Imposing Certain Sanctions in the Event of Foreign Interference in a United States Election. Here's an excerpt. By the authority invested in me as president by the Constitution, citing other sources, I find the ability of persons located in whole or in substantial part outside the U.S. to interfere in or undermine public confidence in elections, including through the unauthorized access of election and campaign infrastructure for the covert distribution of propaganda and disinformation. Notice that the covert distribution of propaganda and disinformation constitutes an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. The EO declares a national emergency that remains in effect to this day. According to DC Dirty Laundry, the election was conducted under this state of emergency, a critical point to understand what they reported next. As in, in the EO, the president states, people and organizations located in part outside the United States are known to be able to interfere in or undermine public confidence in elections uh, through infrastructure or the covert distribution of propaganda and disinformation. If you're starting to see how this ties into CNN, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and MSNBC, you're not alone. All those organizations, as you'll soon see, have been caught under the emergency declaration of foreign interference in U.S. elections aided by complicit corporations on U.S. soil. Let's understand the ramifications. Every news organization as well as every Democrat operative falls under this executive order. It continues. The EO further states this foreign interference in U.S. elections constitutes an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the U.S. Why is this relevant to anything we're seeing right now with a massive election fraud carried out by the Democrats and the deep state? Because Dominion Voting Systems is a Canadian company and Settle is run out of Spain. What else does it potentially involve? A couple of big name leftists. Settle, by the way, is connected to George Soros and the Democrats. And according to the Gateway Pundit, Bill Gates also owns stock in Settle. Dominion is Canadian, Siddle is from Spain. Both represent foreign interference in U.S. elections with data routed through servers in Germany, which, by the way, appear to have been run by the CIA. Another voting machine company called Siddle, also widely used in U.S. elections, is located in Spain. This EO is a game changer, as a national emergency order specifically calls for a seizure of all assets of entities that have directly or indirectly engaged in, sponsored, concealed, or otherwise been complicit in foreign interference in the United States election. Consider the potential recourse. The seizure of Facebook, Google, all media outlets, and assets of individuals like the aforementioned Bill Gates, George Soros, and the thousands of minions who will be out outed. It gets better. 
But that's not even the full extent of what's demanded by this executive order in Section 8. It explains that the term person also means a partnership, association, trust, joint venture, corporation, group, subgroup, or other organization. In other words, any media organization that assisted in covering up or assisting foreign interference in the U.S. election is specifically targeted by this executive order. It, further in the definition section, it explains the term election infrastructure means information and communication technology and systems used by or on behalf of the federal government or a state or local government in managing the election process, including voter registration databases, voting machines, voting tabulation equipment, and equipment for the secure transmission of election results. That would include Dominion voting systems as well as all other voting systems used in the recent election. Things get really interesting when you consider foreign interference. Any covert, fraudulent, deceptive, or unlawful actions or attempted actions of a foreign government or of any person acting as an agent of or on behalf of a foreign government undertakes with a purpose or effect of influencing, undermining confidence in or altering the result or reported result of the election or undermine public confidence in election processes or institutions. Note the important words of altering the result or reported results of the election. This is exactly what big tech and the line fake news media have done to America. More than merely a crime, it is treason and falls right into the national emergency trap pub Trump publicly announced 2018, which now means all these corporations and organizations can have their assets seized literally overnight. That leaves little wiggle room for all the people in the food chain, particularly the media. This is special interest to me, the author writes, the raiding of a server farm in Spain, according to the Gateway Pundit. The U.S. government, once they determined this Dominion server was involved in switching votes, the intelligence community began a search for the server and discovered the server was in Germany. In order to get access to the server and have it available for use in a legal manner, they had to have State Department work in tandem with the Department of Justice. They had to request the government of Germany cooperate, allowing the seizure of this server. Now, what I understand is that they were actually being run by the CIA, which made it possible for the United States to act, even in the absence of specific concurrence of the government of Germany. The appropriate documents required were put in place, signed off, and it appears there was also U.S. military support. The military was not in the lead, but this explains why Esper was fired and Miller and Cash Patel were put in place, so the military would not interfere with the operation in any way. Getting a hold of the server, they now are going to have direct evidence of when they were infrastructure to stop count, instructed to stop counting. They also discovered who gave the direction to stop counting, who initiated the algorithm that started switching votes. The CIA was completely excluded from this operation. That means the seizure operation. Congressman Louis Gohmert mentioned this raid in an interview with Brighton. And according to the DC Dirty Laundry article, the raid appears to have targeted the CIA's Frankfurt server farm operation. They write. We also now have confirmation from WikiLeaks documents the CIA used a data center in Frankfurt as a remote hacking base to rig the U.S. elections. WikiLeaks released a trove of CIA documents Tuesday at claim revealed details of its secret hacking arsenal. The release included 8,761 documents that claim revealed details of malware, viruses, trojans, weaponized zero-day exploits, malware remote control systems, and associated documentation. The leaks purportedly re revealed a top-secret CIA unit used a German survey of Frankfurt on Maine as a starting point for numerous hacking attacks on Europe, China, and the Middle East. German daily. Sudutsche Zuntung reported this building was known to be home to a vast network of CIA intelligence personnel including NASA spies, military secret service, Department of Homeland Security employees, and secret service. You know, the Americans have also established a dense network of outposts and shell companies in Frankfurt. It appears the CIA was using the same foreign data center to hack U.S. elections and got caught. This is precisely why, as the Gateway Bundit reports, the CIA was kept completely out of the server raid operation. 
which was likely leveled against the CIA's own server farm that ran the remote Dominion hacking operation the night of the election. Now Team Trump is in the process of gathering irrefutable evidence of criminal collusion to carry out election interference, and the cover-up trails will lead directly to big tech, targeted censorship and collusion with China, and the fake news left-wing media gaslighting propaganda campaign to cover up evidence of foreign collusion. If this information is remotely true, we're in for one hell of a ride over the next few weeks. Scorpio, your thoughts. Well, I think what we're seeing is the inner workings of globalism unveiled. And why in the world were they sending the vote tallies off to Spain and Germany and who, who knows where else? It's just an open invitation for fraud. But this is part of the globalist system. And to be honest, I, I truly believe that the media is simply owned by the central bankers, the, the companies that allegedly own the media. They're, they're, they're just shell companies. And you have to ask yourself, why has not one single media outlet folded or gone bankrupt during all these different economic crises we've been through? The reason is, is because they're covertly funded by the bankers and they're a fully weaponized arm of propaganda to control people's minds. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, these intelligence agencies are simply the private army and the shock troops uh, and the dirty tricks machine for the central bankers. And, you know, uh, one other side note, you know, the G20 meeting happened uh, just the other day, and apparently the main topic of discussion was the global response to COVID. Yeah, that's all very disturbing. Stop and think about who controls the mainstream media, who controls the big tech giants and the social media platforms. We'll return to this topic before the conclusion of our report today. Chris, your thoughts. Okay. Uh, well, there's a couple of things. Uh, I, I was looking at the ex post facto uh, thing that they can't really do much for the 2016, but moving forward, they definitely could. Uh, my fear is that they could actually invert the perception of this law or this interpretation against uh, the obtuse and the thinking that, you know, say a fangs takes control of this narrative and the, the big tech takes control of the narrative and then flips and calls us conspiracy theorists saying that we're putting with the truth somehow this, do you know what I mean? They can put you on eggshells like they always have with the official narrative and with the mainstream media. I think that's always been the function of propaganda it's not only that but like it's like a risk transfer if that makes sense uh where, where it's it's really obfuscating the blame and establishing suspicion uh, amongst our own ranks you know appealing to selective tokenisms things like this uh there's certainly ways that they can you know pry and fulcrum fear and and intimidate people uh, you know while these processes you know are patiently unfolding they can take out little pieces of, of the of the evidence or the whistleblowers or the you know as you know i mean you could you can imagine what these guys do with intimidation. And I also uh, want to point out that, that most of these liberal governments that take hold and take power in such a manner, uh, mass genocides typically follow the implementation of these governments, historically speaking. So th there is a strong track record, traditionally speaking, of these people weaponizing the youth against the elders and in, in the outrage of, of, of a disenfranchisement that has been very much part of the system. So uh, not an accident. And I also want to point out that Germany has been occupied territory by the United Nations for the last 80 years, arguably under, you know, surreptitious pretenses to control uh, the entire population through the EU and the IMF, World Bank and Bank of International Settlements. So that's all I got for now. Well, those are all wonderful points, uh, Chris. I would just add that. Of course, they're going to yell and scream and try to shift responsibility and claim this is conspiracy theorizing. The difference is... It's not a theory at all. It's a fact for which they have overwhelming evidence. It's and true. what this means is we're going to test the judicial system of the United States to see if there's a modicum of integrity left. And if not, then the nation will have been corrupted to the point where it's unsalvageable. We shall see. Uh, Jim, they're gonna, they're trying to thing? test the metal I just want to add people. something on to Chris's points, which is that, you know, if you study history, the end game of all tyrannical governments is always mass genocide every time. That's, of course, very disturbing because Deagle.com reports that there's going to be a, a dramatic two-thirds reduction in the U.S. population between now and 2025, going from 330 million now to less than 100 million in 2025. What could possibly bring that about? Even the rate of death from wearing masks 
which brings about a slow, gradual deterioration to your body and your brain, I think is not sufficient to account for over 200 million deaths. So what you're talking about is a very serious prospect. Chris, did you want to add? Yeah, definitely. That's a, a, a memo I've been trying to find on Google, but it's been long since scrubbed. But it's by Paul Wolfowitz as president of the World Bank talking about the same population expectation, except he had it initially in 2005 as 67 million, and they moved it up throughout time and then eventually purged it from the ranks of, of, of oversight and being able to actually find it. So back to you. Well, well, God knows this must not come to pass. Meanwhile, Barack Obama, joke we can always send the Navy SEALs in to forcibly remove Trump from the White House. He made the comment during an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel's late night show. During one segment, he discussed the election hints that oh, Trump may need to be removed from the White House. You know the White House law, you live there for eight years. Are there places someone could uh, hide, he had? Like, uh, say they want, they were going to be removed. Are there little cubby holes or anything we could know about? Obama replied, well, I think we can always send the Navy SEALs in there to dig him out. Really outrageous. Obama's joke was not merely disrespectful. Uh, Biden himself has also alleged the military might need to step in to forcibly remove Trump. I promise I'm absolutely convinced they'll escort him from the White House with great dispatch, Biden told Comedy Central. Uh, meanwhile, Maxine Waters on DHS sending agents to Portland as riots continue. As a matter of fact, it's suggested this is a trial run by the President of the United States, who may be organizing to not accept what happens when we have the election if he's not elected. I think, in fact, the joke is going to prove to be on them. Scorpio, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, you know, that was supposed to be this clever ha 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 little joke by Obama. It's again, very, very disturbing. And what we're seeing is th what they're trying to do is to destroy any semblance of nationalism or populism. And we're going to see a continued and escalating campaign to discredit all things Trump. Everything the guy's ever done in office is going to be attacked and discredited because they, they want to dissuade people from believing in populism or nationalism, which is really the only way forward if people want to stay uh, uh, free and not become slaves to a global empire. This is just outrageous. And Obama has just turned into an, a really evil looking man, just disgusting. Yeah, I think his true colors are emerging and they are very disturbing indeed. Chris, your thoughts? Yeah, this uh, reminds me of the Congress of Vienna after uh, 1812. They basically, uh, the Rothschild and the oligarchs and the formal nobility of, of Europe get together and talk about uh, destroying by all and any means necessary the all populist governments around the world. And I think they really put in these inversions under the guise of liberty. It's part of the UN colonization model where they lend the optic of independence, just like the UK did, you know, to India or China or whoever. But they really put further economic sorcery and controls over the resources and the labor force uh, by these corporate means or by NGOs or, or by propaganda or things like this, controlling oppositions in terms of political frustrations. Gladio B formulas, you know, uh, back to you. Wonderful, wonderful comments from you both. Thanks. Meanwhile, we want to hear from you. Send us fan mail pro or con to live need to know at gmail.com. Live need to know at gmail.com. Zuby writes, racism, fascism, and bullying are perfectly fine, provided you do them under the banner of anti-racism, anti-fascism, and anti-bullying. This captures Antifa, Black Lives Matter, and the Democratic Party to a T. Need to know the Fetzer report of 19 November regarding Lynn Wood. It seems there's a campaign to convince more moderate Democrats of the scope of what has taken place, as well as the presentation of the retired Lieutenant General, ineffective in solidifying the support of the military. The question remains, what are the BB faithful in the USA doing? Donald Trump has been a faithful supporter of Israel. They should be looking to support his efforts from John Doe. But here, an excellent comment from Jim Stone, who owns the media. It is once again time to remind people exactly who stole the election, who rigged it, who infiltrated on all levels, who paid the poll workers, who kicked the poll watchers out. As it turns out, Bill Gates was at least 
partially involved in paying the poll workers who rigged the election. What religion is he? As it turns out, Zuckerberg did all he could to censor and assist in the stealing of the election. What religion is he? What religion owns CNN? What religion owns the rest of the media, including even Newsmax? What religion runs Hollywood? What religion is George Soros? Answer these questions and you'll know who stole this election. If that specific group did not steal the election, they'd use their media outlets to shout the theft from their rooftops. Instead, crickets, backstabs, extra work done to seal the steal. Regardless of whether or not Venezuela was involved, it was one group of people who stole this election. And they continue to do so, outing themselves every day with what they spew through their media outlets. If they did not steal the election, why would they censor all word of who was involved in doing it? Meanwhile, thank you, uh, Jim. I've been really loving your formal uh, format and news report with Giuseppe and Scorpio. You guys are just wonderful. I'm very grateful for your diligent research and passion for truth and freedom. I wanted to send you an email to say how much I appreciate your efforts. We are living in such an insane matrix system. It's hard to find awake humans to even exchange information with. It's beyond frustrating, infuriating to see so many sheep and compliant idiots surrounding this realm. It's mind boggling to say the least. Sometimes I feel truly alone, but then see shows like yours and I feel okay. I wish I could be friends with all three of you. If you have a mailing list, please add me to it. Much love. I'm including a funny video clip I saw yesterday. We must find some laughter in the absolute insanity of this mass BS, scandemic lunacy happening this November. I have it here, but for some reason we get the audio, but not the video. Do you hate America? Are you sick and tired of having freedoms? Do you wish the government would just tell you what to do every second of the day? Well, now your wish is granted with our brand new authoritarian fashion accessory. Introducing the slave muzzle. The slave muzzle, made in China, of course, is a revolutionary accessory that not only allows you to virtue signal and feel important 24-7, but also show how willing you are to be a slave to your own government. Originally touted by Dr. Fauci, who first said you didn't need one, the slave muzzle says, Look at me. I'm a sheep. I believe everything I hear on CNN and do whatever I see everyone else doing. Just listen to this real testimonial. Wow. Amazing! The slave muzzle will cover your nose and mouth while doing a perfect job of symbolically showing the world you can be silenced easily and without any resistance. You may notice the box itself says it's not effective against COVID-19. Please ignore this and trap on your slave muzzle immediately. I love it. I love it. I love it. Meanwhile, from Fit Frank, objectives to be achieved. Important to realize this is not about only winning election. Donald Trump has been aware of overreaching create, uh, corruption in government for many years. He's decided he'll try to hit a grand slam home run. Keep in mind what's in store for the opposing side if DT achieves his objective, as Attorney Lynn Wood and Lieutenant General Thomas McCurney have stated. People are going to go to jail. These people, and it could go all the way to Hillary C. and Barack O., will do anything to avoid this. And they have the support of the globalists. DT must have might in order to allow right to prevail, as he as he needs, as I mentioned in previous posts, the National Guard, the military, the Secret Service, these other partially dubious players, DOJ, FBI, CIA, at least in part, it's going to be contentious, if not all-out chaos. One must wonder if the manipulators have not foreseen this. They will look to retake power through this eventual chaos. Important to remember it will not be over quickly. To mitigate the chaos, is it possible that lower level underlings will pay the price in order to keep order? Just my opinion. Meanwhile, if your mind's remotely ajar, get confirmation for all those cases you wondered about, a vast array, 15 to 18 different conspiracies and false flags discussed, during the virtual False Flag and Conspiracies 2020 conference, 5 to 6 December 2020, available online from the comfort of your own home. Check it out at falseflagconspiracies2020.com. Falseflagconspiracies2020.com. Meanwhile, 
your final thought, Scorpio? Well, you know, uh, with regard to the first uh, topic you brought up, uh, it's all a one-way street when it comes to bad behavior. Uh, you can have any kind of outrageous behavior you want on social media, uh, and even uh, legally speaking, if you are aboard this globalist agenda, it really is a one-way street. Uh, people that are patriotic and believe in um, liberty are going to be increasingly demonized by these people. We need to prepare for that because it's not going to stop. And what, one thing they do, these globalists do, is they're hiding behind, um, you know, anti-racism and, you know, homosexual freedom. You know, you can have all the uh, gay sex you want. Hey, look, you're free. You can have gay sex. And that's just a trick so people don't see the coming totalitarianism that is rushing towards us right now. And, um, you know, isn't it interesting, just in closing uh, on that video you showed, you know, that talked about how the masks are made in China. Isn't it interesting how the Chinese have been wearing those masks for years, uh, supposedly because of pollution? Okay, fine. But the fact is, uh, you know, it was, it's been going on in China for years, and now here it's being exported to the entire world. Something to really take note of. Very, very nice, Scorpio. Chris, your final thoughts. Well, I think that it's uh, another a generational operation to slave train the next generation to uh, accommodate them and to customize them to this new normal that is certainly not normal and, and, and very, very reprehensible in terms of human nature. I think that they're systematically trying to dehumanize us through propaganda and uh, different various levels of information and even ethical standards, I'll say. And, and I think that they're really trying to mobilize the, the obtuse against the well-intentioned and, and weaponize our vices and virtues. So uh, I think it's a game of, of complete inversion and those with eyes to see know exactly what's going on and those without are, are really serving uh, something maybe that they don't know that they're serving. Well, I'm very pleased that you have a member of your family joining you on this occasion because this is for our children and our grandchildren and for the legacy of the United States of America. Let me draw a parallel with JFK. What has been going on here is an attempt to carry out an electronic assassination of Donald Trump, just as they carried out a physical assassination of our 35th president. To understand either event, you need to distinguish between the sponsors, the facilitators, and the mechanics. In the case of JFK, it was the CIA. He was threatening to shatter into a thousand pieces. The military upset because he hadn't followed their advice in invading Cuba or opposing signing a death ban treaty with the Soviets or pulling our forces out of Vietnam. The mafia was upset because he was bringing more indictments and convictions than ever before. Texas oilmen worried he would cut their oil depletion allowance the Fed because he was issuing United States notes rather than, than Federal Reserve on the grounds that it made more sense to not have to pay interest to a consortium of private banks when the U.S. could do it itself. Uh, 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 Anti-Castro Cubans who wanted revenge for what they falsely believed was betrayal at the Bay of Pigs in Israel because... Uh, 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 Jack was opposed to Israeli, uh, Israel acquiring nuclear weapons. The mechanics on the ground appear to have included a shooter from each of the groups I have just specified. We have now discovered there were at least eight. I have identified six. My name, rank, and serial number, Oli Domagarda, seventh. And the facilitators in that case were Lyndon Johnson, who wanted to become president of all the people and J. Edgar Hoover and covering it up. To carry the transfer over, the globalists, the deep state, the establishment, are all opposed to Donald Trump. Israel, too, because Donald Trump is refusing to bomb Iran. So these Israelis are a part and parcel given their massive control of the media. I have shown before a panel of 100 executives from CNN, all of whom are dual U.S. Israeli citizens, a hundred others from NBC, all of whom are dual U.S. Israeli citizens, another panel from the New York Times, a hundred of whom are dual U.S. Israeli citizens. So the mechanics, the shooters and their supervisors include the anchors, the talking heads, the reporters giving fake news, which our president has brilliantly been exposing, and with the orchestrators 
here, the facilitators appear to have included Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, John Brennan, and a host of others. I believe that this brilliant guy laid a trap that they've fallen into it. He has the goods. I believe our nation is going to be saved by the man that I believe will go down in history as the greatest president of the United States, the man who saved the nation. This is Jim Fetzer in Madison, thanking David Scorpio from the exotic land of Ecuador, Chris Weinhardt from Detroit, a center of corruption in this massive voting fraud in Michigan. We're grateful you all have joined us. Keep the faith. As Linwood has observed, be patient. It's all going to play out. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with the news you need to know.